Alrighty, my friends. I'm all set now. And happy Thursday. Happy day before Friday. It is September 26th. And um, I'm looking forward to the weekend to come. I don't know if I've mentioned this um, earlier this week, but um, after this Facebook Live, I'm going to pick up Andrea and Riley, and we're going to Cincinnati to spend the night and then tomorrow um, with Emily doing something fun, just the girls. So I'm super excited to be with, um, have some special time with my two daughters and my granddaughter, just the girls. So it'll be great fun. Um, before we get started on today's project, I do want to let you know I have a new class to go, and that is using the Christmas Friends bundle, the stamp set, and the dies. And one thing I love about these cards is you will make eight cards, two each of four designs, and I'm going to give you something called wobbles. And wobbles are basically just a pr plastic spring. So you can do stuff like this with your fun cards. Um, so just super cute. I kind of kind of wiggle and wobble. Um, look at the moose. Isn't he cute? I think Riley will go crazy over cards like this with the wobbles. So you will get the eight wobbles for each of the cards when you order this class to go. All of the information for that has been sent out in my email newsletter, and it's also posted on my website, stampinpeace.com. So get all of the class options, details, pricing right there. Now on Tuesday, we used the Frosted Forest decorative masks to make some pretty awesome cards, if I do say so myself using blending brushes and various ink pads. Okay, this just posted to my website, stampinpeace.com. So all of the information, the video demonstration, the um, cutting dimensions, Stampin' Up! products used are all there. In addition, somebody asked, well, what would the tree look like if you stamped it first and then did the blending of color. And this is an example of that, also on that um, blog post that just, just published like minutes ago, half hour ago maybe. Um, as you know, recently I participated in a couple of um, craft retreats and at the one that had 25 people there, um, somebody made this awesome card. So it's a fun fold and it's sort of a version of the Z fold card. So I'm going to teach you how to make this today. And with that, we'll be using the um, Evergreen from the Frosted Friends bundle, both the stamp and the die. So let me flip my camera around now so we can get started right away. And while I'm doing that, would you please share this live video demonstration and invite others to join us. You can even tag your friends right in the comments here. Okay, I'm so excited about this. It's so hard getting the camera to just be still when I have to flip it. Okay, I'm actually going to make two cards. The first one is going to be the most basic version of that um, fun fold card I just showed you. And then the second one will be a stepped up version. So I'm going to actually make the, put together the components of the card first, 
and then I'll do the stamping and the blending of the evergreen tree. And we'll talk more about this set of the decorative masks in that collection. So first of all, I have um, two pieces of cardstock, the same color, and they each measure, um, let me think, five and a half by four and a quarter, okay? Five and a half by four and a quarter. And then I have a complementary color of cardstock, and these measure one and a quarter inch by four inches, one and a quarter by four. And I'm just going to adhere these to each end of what is my card base. So the finished card will be standard A2 size, five and a half by four and a quarter, but the actual opening um, card where you write um, will be smaller than that and it will fit right on here. So let me just show you this. So with that second piece of five and a half by four and a quarter inch cardstock, I'm going to score on one side at two and three quarters inches because that's half of the five and a half. And then I'm going to flip it because each of my folds is going to be folded a different direction. So that's why I flip. I think it just makes for um, a cleaner fold for each of them. So on this one, I'm going to do one and three eighths. And I'm scoring at one and three eighths because now that is half of the two and three quarter inch section. And then I'm simply going to fold this in half, give that first score line a nice crease. And then on the second score line, I'm folding that flap up and to the left. All right, so now it looks like this, okay? Um, at this point, I can go ahead and adhere this to my card base. So I like to adhere it when it's closed. And this will fit just right between those one and a quarter inch cardstock strips and the top and bottom edge will eat, meet the top and bottom edge of the original card base. Now before I put this together, I actually am going to adhere my white piece to the inside of that Z fold card, the mini Z fold card, I'll call it. Of course, if you want to stamp an image or a sentiment, you'll want to do that before you adhere it. Now I want to, oops, and that piece is not cut correctly. Let me grab another. Come on. Come on, I have some extras here, extra pieces. There we go. That's got a funny line in it. Okay. So I'm going to adhere this just like that, okay? So this is basically the same size as half of this uh, mini Z fold card. So it measures two and a three, two and three quarter inches by four inches. And I don't want that there. I'm getting a little flustered here. I had a little technical difficulty before I got online and it kind of stressed me out because I was trying to get on on time. So what I'm going to do is adhere this to this strip. So I wanna make sure that my adhesive is only on the one side of that. And it can be a little tricky holding it all in place, but, um, and if it helps you, 
use the multi-purpose glue for this step because that will allow you to slide this piece around if, if you need to. But you'll notice that these three edges all match up cleanly, okay? So now this is my variation on the Z Fold card, okay? It's just a mini of Z Fold cards we make, correct? And then now, okay, I'm a little flustered here because I had all my pieces laid out, there we go. So I'm using another white piece that measures the same size as the inside one. And this is two and three quarters by four inches. And I'm going to stamp on this now using the large evergreen stamp. And I'm going to stamp this with Mossy Meadow. So this is going to give me that detail of the evergreen. If you remember on Tuesday when we were um, doing the other kind of tree, I didn't stamp first on the first, first three cards that I made. Okay, I just used the decorative masks. Here I'm adding a little more detail by stamping with the coordinating stamp first. And then, now I'm gonna put this on my mat here. I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of adhesive on the back side so it stays in place. I'll make sure I'm in a spot where you will see it well. And then I'm going to use my second set of decorative masks, okay? The first set is what we used for Tuesday's cards. The second set is all part of, both sets are part of the Frosted Forest bundle. And you'll see that these are lettered A, B, C in order, whereas the first set was numbered one, two, three. The other thing you'll notice about this set is there are two. The reason being you can make a large tree, a large evergreen, or a small evergreen tree. And you have the option to use just the stamp set, just the decorative masks, or a combination of both, which is what I'm doing now. So I'm going to match this up. This can be a little bit tricky on this one, but what I'm going to tell you is this little triangle at the top and then this kind of straight edge here and here and here those are what I found I was looking at when I was matching up this mask so just look for those things and you can shift it here and there a little bit if you want to I'm going to put that in place and then I'm going to go ahead and mark um, where I've put my masks each time. All right. Somebody asked me after Tuesday's Facebook Live, why would I? Why didn't I start blending off on my decor decorative mask and then move? Why was I using scrap paper? The reason for that, and I often do it just right here on my glass mat. But the reason I didn't do it Tuesday is there were so many colors and we ended up making, what, four card fronts? So there would just be a whole lot more cleanup between, um, between segments than there is today because today I'm only using two colors and I'm making um, two cards, all right? So I'm going to first start put it here with inking up my um, small blending brush you can use a large one if you have those or prefer those and then you're just going to start off the other thing is you can start off right on top of the decorative mask and I'm going to blend 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 swirl 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 until I'm happy with the shade if I want to add a little more 
old olive ink to make that a little bit darker, I can. And you can just keep adding until you get the shade you want. And really, when you are adding ink to your blending brush, just do it gently. Swirl a little bit right in the ink pad. You don't want to push. You don't want to press hard. Just swirl it across the top surface, okay? And I'm going to say that looks good to me. So I'm going to pull up mask A. And then I'm going to put down mask B. Remember, these are all marked for you. And if I'm putting this in here correctly, it should match up pretty much like that. You want to go with the markings for your mask. If it looks a little off to you, just trust the process as long as you are following the markings for your mask, okay? The next thing I'm going to do is blend some of my Mossy Meadow ink on there. I love the richness of this color. And I especially love it with Cherry Cobbler, my favorite red ever um, when making holiday cards. Mossy Meadow and Cherry Cobbler. And I'm going to pull this up. Isn't that beautiful? Now, I can stop right here, but I'm going to take it one more step just to show you. What I want you to see when I place this mask C down is look where the, some of the opening spots are. What does it remind you of? Do you notice anything? Do you notice anything when you look at this? Okay, for me, it looks like it would look really cool um, if maybe I had some white, um, what's it called, the paste. Um, that you go over it and give some texture because then it would look like snow on my tree. But this time it'll just look like the tree is that much fuller. Okay, but you'll see what I mean when I lift this mask off. There we go. If I can get it. Okay, and I did it lightly, um, and I'll show you another example of it later. But do you see how that is just in some of these spots? Okay, so if we were using something like that white um, paste, it would give the illusion of snow on it, which is really cool. And which I would really like to show you, but I don't have any right now. So I'm going to put that on my shopping list and hopefully we'll um, be able to show you that real soon. So now I'm simply going to finish off this card. And remember, this is the simple version. Next, I'm going to do a stepped up version of this card, which in my opinion is really impressive. I think you're going to love it. Okay, now, and this could be any kind of card, right? Any kind of card. You know, there is something I can do in the middle. I could stamp this here, but if I stamp that, I don't have much room to write, correct? But watch what I can do. So I'm going to ink this up with, um, I think I'll do, I'm gonna do the old olive, just because I do want it light. And I'm going to stamp off once, twice, three times. And then you can see how light it is. Can you see that? So I just want a very light image of that tree here. So that if I wanted to write over it, I very much could. Or whoever gets this card, because I will give it away. One, two, three. Whoever... Um, and turn that back, it's a little bit easier to see. Whoever gets this card, if they wanna write a message in here, it's light enough that they can write right over it. 
okay? If they just want to put uh, Dear Mary from your friend Susie or whatever, you can do that. But it's just very, very light, okay? You could even stamp a small sentiment over that in full strength um, ink, like they have this little thank you in here, or the birthday wishes. You could stamp that right over, okay? So this is my basic version of that fun fold card. Now, let me show you the stamped up version, okay? This is sort of the, what am I gonna call it? Um, the creme de la creme, we'll say. Okay, notice how easily that Sharpie marker came off with the chamois that comes with my glass mat. Isn't that amazing? I thought it was fabulous when um, I could so easily um, wipe off any adhesive I had on the glass. But then when I discovered that about the Sharpies, whoo, that was something fabulous. Okay, so once again, we're going to start with two pieces of five and a half by four and a quarter inch um, cardstock, same color, all right? On the first one, I've cut two pieces of designer series paper, and these measure one and a quarter by four inches. So the um, dimensions are exactly the same, okay? The dimensions are exactly the same as the first card. I love this plaid. The plaid is from the Season of Elegance designer series paper. And it's specialty paper because on one side of each of the sheets, there is um, gold foil accents, which is awfully pretty. But I sure do love this plaid. Okay. And then you'll remember with that second piece of five and a half by four and a quarter cardstock, I want to score that twice. So I'm going to score it in half at two and three quarters. I'm flipping it over because the second fold will be folded in the opposite direction. And I'm going to score, yes, yeah, score at one and three eighths. And one and three eighths is half of that two and three quarter, okay? So I will fold this in half, give that a good crease, fold the small flap up and to the left, give that a nice crease. And then I'm ready to add this to my first piece of cardstock. And I'm centering it between those two pieces of designer series paper, and I'm making sure that all the tops and bottoms match up nicely. Okay, Getting, giving it a smooth edge at the top and bottom. Alrighty, so there's one way I've already stepped up this original card. The first one, I just used plain cardstock in Old Olive. I could have even stamped a little on there, maybe randomly stamped the evergreen. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is add the inside. And since I did go ahead and stamp the tree on the first card, I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. So one, two, three, because I want it very light. I'm trying to center it here. Okay, I got some of the edge of my block on there. Do you see that? So let me try again. One, two, three, tap, tap, tap. One, two, three, and don't you love it that cardstock has two sides? <laughs> I do, because I'm not perfect. And if I make a mistake, I can flip it over just like I did here. So now I'm ready to add this to the inside of that mini Z-Fold card base. Just like that. 
And then, remember before I put down just a plain piece of mossy meadow cardstock here? Well, I'm going to jazz that up, jazz up that front by adding a piece of gold foil paper to that layer. And the mossy meadow layer, once again, is two and three quarters by four inches. So my gold is two and a half inches by three and three quarters, okay? Two and a half by three and three quarters. And now I'm ready to adhere this to that small front flap of my Z fold. Remember, you wanna put your adhesive just on that one side. I was using scrap paper, so if you notice that score line, that's why it was a piece of scrap with my mossy meadow cardstock. I try to use every bit of everything if I can. And I knew that that score line would basically be covered by my gold foil layer. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is stamp and blend the, oh, I don't know what that is on there. Choose a clean one, just in case. And I'm going a little bit larger. And no, this piece would not fit into that card. However, I'm going to be die cutting my tree. All right. So I'm going to, oops, I should have put this on my mat first because I am using a photopolymer stamp. <clears throat> so I'm stamping the evergreen details with Mossy Meadow. And it's not quite centered, but remember that's okay because I'm going to be die cutting this. So I'm not worried about it being centered here. And then I'm going to use mask A, and I always want to check. And I'm going to match this up. Remember if you do the little triangle at the top and then some of these straight edges of the mask, it will line up like it should. And once again, I'm going to mark this first mask. And I like to use Sharpie, as you see when I'm marking on my glass mat. It shows up easily and um, it comes off easily too with the chamois. And now I will blend in some old olive. If you weren't with me at the very beginning, please check out my website, stampinpeace.com because I did post the replay and all the dimensions, everything you need for um, the cards I made on Tuesday's Facebook Live. And also, there is a post on there with my newest class to go, featuring the really, really cute stamp set and dies called Christmas Friends. You're going to love it. So all the information is there. Okay, I'm matching up this mask B with my markings. And I really could use, I'm using two colors of green, right? Old Olive and Mossy Meadow. And really for the second mask, I think you could use either one. I'm going to continue and use the Old Olive. And I'm just trying to go on a little heavier than I did with the first mask because that'll give it more dimension. And I'll move 
that out of the way. Okay, so there it is with masks A and B. And then I'm going to go in with mask C. And again, if you wanted to use some of that white paste or, or maybe you have, I don't know, I don't know how white ink would do going over the colors of ink. I'm not sure about that. Certainly a white paint, but that white paste that we sew would be fabulous for adding snow to your evergreen. I'll have to remember to add that to my next order so I can give that a try because I think it would look really cool. It kind of gives you a hint of that right now. Okay, and for Mask C, I'm using Mossy Meadow, as you might have guessed. I'm gonna go on a little heavier than maybe I did the first card. Remember, um, especially if you start out by practicing with your decorative masks, start out lighter and then go a little darker. Okay. So here's a good look of, now imagine those darkest areas being white and looking like snow. It's perfectly fine for an evergreen look, but think of how it would look differently with the white paste. Okay. All right, let's cut this out. Did I cut it? I'm going to close up these ink pads because I've had a very inky week. Moving all these inky masks out of my way as well. And put this here. And it's got that little bit of adhesive on the back still, and that's okay. That'll wipe off from from my cutting plates. I'm gonna add my tree and I'm gonna play it safe and play it safe by holding it in place with my, some of my post-it tape. You can use a post-it note to hold it in place. You can use washi tape. Julie, you're funny. I've been looking at this bundle for a month. You know, I looked at it for quite a while, too, before I decided to go ahead and buy it. And now I'm just like, ooh, the ideas just keep flowing. Okay, I will. I'm going to use my take your pick tool to kind of lift this up because I did have that little bit of adhesive on. So I want to just ease it off gently. That seemed to do the trick. And then I'm going to add it to my card front. And look how stunning that is going to be against the gold foil paper. I'll do it like this, I guess. Just like that. I could even put another layer of cardstock or something behind, but I like it against the gold. I think that's incredibly beautiful. Okay. Of course, you can add any sentiment you like. Um, a thank you. Um, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Thinking of you. Could be a birthday card. It's sort of generic. Okay, our first thought maybe because we are getting into um, the last quarter of the year, we start thinking about the holidays to come. You might think Christmas right away, and that's okay. But think of how you can use this throughout the year. Okay, you could use it through the winter, but I also think you could use it year round. And I think this plaid allows for that as well. 
So let me pull the first card in here, and you can see the first card is nice. The second card is, ooh, wow. How did you do that, right? I just made some simple changes, additions to um, step up the second card. I switched out the old olive cardstock for the Season of Elegance designer series paper. And then instead of stamping on white and adhering that to the card, I did a layer of gold foil and then I um, stamped, blended, and die cut the evergreen tree. Shireen, I agree with you. You can never go wrong. Or who said that? Julie and Shireen both like the plaid so much. You're right. You can't go wrong with plaids, right? Okay. Any other thoughts about this? Would you do anything differently? What would you do if you were stepping up that first card? I could think of something I can do to the tree yet to step it up. Let's see if any of you come up with what I'm thinking of. Just type your comments in the answer, or your answer in the comment section. What could you do to that tree on the second card to step it up even more than just die cutting it? <gasps> Wink. Yes, Wink of Stella. Wink the tree, add a little shimmer to it. Anything else? A little red on the tree, yes. How about, it is a good masculine card. Um, some gold gems on the tree. How about a gold star up at the top? Let's take this card and step further. Hold on, let me grab what I'm looking for. Oh, come on, it's gotta be right here. Okay, I'm gonna be just, oh, here it is, here it is. Okay. How about if we just add some of these red berries to the tree? Julie, yes, yeah, so many possibilities, right? We could go on and on. I'm going to add some of these red berry embellishments. Now, I know these have been out of stock. Honestly, I um, don't know if they're back in stock now or not. And if you look them up online or try to add them to an order online and it says currently unavailable, that means it's coming back. I know there are a lot of embellishments that we're waiting on that are supposed to be coming in in the next few weeks. So don't fret, they'll be back. We just have to keep watching. Do it just like that and leave it at the five. Five's a good odd number. Remember, we typically do this in odd numbers, which makes me think of something that happened recently. Um, I'm excited because I've been um, saving, saving, savings for something I want to do, and that is to um, add a little bit to my patio and a back, it's not even big enough to call a porch, a little step area and then a little extra patio area next to what I already have, just to make it a little larger. And then I'm also adding landscaping in the backyard. My backyard has been bare, so I'm excited about this. But anyways, when this Andy from the company was out here and we were talking about different things, I was asking, well, how many would you put here? How many would you put there? And one of his comments was three. Odd numbers always look better. <laughs> And then in another section, he was doing three of something and two of something else. And he said, again, because odd numbers just look better. And I thought, preach it, preach it. Isn't that what we talk about in um, paper crafting with adding embellishments? I know people who do um, floral design also say the same thing. Work in odd numbers, pretty cool. All right, who would like to... Um, 
receive one of these cards. If you would like to have your name and Andy knows, you got it, Vesta. <laughs> um, he knows. Um, if you would like to have your name entered to the into the drawing to possibly receive one of these cards, please type in the comments now. Um, let's do evergreen. Evergreen. So we went over a lot today. We learned a new fun fold. We talked about um, blending and using decorative masks some more. And then we also talked about stepping up cards, making easy changes or additions, simple changes and additions to step up one card from basic to wow. And when I say basic, please don't think if you are if you are doing basic cards, wonderful. We have all started there, right? And sometimes I'm just in the mood for really simple cards, okay? Other times I'm in the mood for stepped up cards. So no matter what your style or your preferences, you do you, okay? You do you. All right. Um, any other questions, suggestions, anything like that? You also got a, uh, a look at how I use the glass mask for marking with my Sharpie and how easily it cleans up. So a lot kind of, um, not intentionally, but a lot was crammed into this Facebook Live. All right, everybody have a great weekend. I am going to put my things in the car and then I'm heading off to pick up Andrea and Riley and we are off to um, go visit Emily in Cincinnati. So I'm excited. It's like a little, it's my own girl's trip with my own girls. Um, oh, and one more thing, please um, keep in your best thoughts and prayers the people who are being affected by the hurricane. Also, if you would be so kind as to um, keep a friend of mine in your prayers as he is having um, open heart surgery tomorrow. It's actually my sister's father-in-law, and he's a wonderful man. Um, I've just, it's been so nice getting to know him over the many years that Joan um, has been married. So um, if you'll keep Doug in your prayers, I would appreciate that as well. If you are in the area of the hurricane, please do everything you can do to be safe. Um, I'm assuming that you already are safe and being on a Facebook Live watching me is not the place for you to be when you are preparing. Take care, everybody, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.